Let's this conference will now be recorded. Uh, okay, so in the last class we have seen till uh, the flight page, flight to the page is done, and book a flight page where we have did some validation, like uh, whether the validation to check whether the uh, total price is calculated correctly. So that uh, uh, whatever the requirement says, the total price must be equal to uh, the depart price plus return price multiplied by number of passengers traveling plus tax is exactly equal to the total price displayed on the web page. So, and we uh, uh, passed it, passed the test case for that one. So that validation is done in the summary page. Right, so till this, we have to go through a lot of challenges. So what are those challenges? The challenges are to how to capture the text first of all, okay? The validation is not so simple. So we have to capture the text using get text method. Then after capturing text, we have encountered some unwanted characters like the special characters, dollar symbol. So we have to get rid of them. So we use some techniques like replace all string string classes lot of these functions replace all or i can also use substring okay either one of these you can use depending upon the situation of course you have to use the uh, uh, this sense programming sense and uh, those whatever ultimately we got is text because whatever you capture and get rid of unwanted text is still a string variable right and we have to convert the string to integer okay so the only way to convert the string to integer is using integer dot parsing just remember this this is standard question how do you parse a string to integer so you have to say using integer dot parsing so integer is a class and there is a function called parsing and if you pass a string it will give you integer okay so integer is the return type take the string as argument and return as an integer so this passes the string argument as a signed decimal integer that means signed whether it is plus or minus it will return appropriately negative or positive number so you can ask like uh, okay if the total price in this case total price is just an integer like fifteen hundred dollars or something right so then we can use integer to parse it what if, if the total price is fifteen hundred dollars uh 26 cents then what you have to do i already told you can anybody remind we use double or correct double dot because that's a double number you want a double out of string right so i yeah. told you the exact situation i but i commented because we don't have double so in that case you have to use the double dot pass double okay then pass the taxes it will return double if it is a long integer then use a long every uh, primitive data type has its own class so just put capital letter it becomes a class that's it and parse the class parse that primitive data type that's it and it does the same thing and it returns a long if you are using double dot parse double it will return a double so this will be a decimal number floating point number so appropriately you can use so once we have converted everything into numbers numbers means integers doubles are long those are numbers then we can easily put uh, arithmetic calculations in between in between them you can easily do plus minus multiplication divided by so now we want to validate anything we want two values minimum i mean we, we can put more but minimum two one is expected one is actual and uh, ex expected is coming always coming from requirement so just remember this expected value comes from the requirement actual value comes from where actual value comes from where can anybody say this comes from um, from like uh, the web page or runtime right whatever is displayed on the web page runtime that means executing while executing that is you consider it as uh, you can you have to consider it as actual total price actual value in general sense okay 
because it's actual that is displayed you don't know even while you're writing test cases you write test step okay test step P is test step number 10 let's say test step number 10 then test step description is validate that the expected total price which is depart price plus return price plus into, into number of passengers plus taxes um, should be equal to the total price okay that uh, test set description is directly validating the requirement which says the same thing okay then actual result you leave it empty okay, while writing test cases you just write the expected result oh expected result expected result would be this one is equal to uh, this one so total description is you just capture this total price you calculate this depart price to plus return price multiplied by number of passengers plus taxes then expected result column you will say this value is equal to actual value okay then there will be one more column actual value right you leave it empty but while uh, executing you populate it with the whatever is displayed on the page so that will be your actual value now you simply have to compare these so the best way to compare these is using the if condition if else and uh, if these two are numbers you just simply put equals equal sign if these two are strings you you have to also compare strings we have already seen that you simply have to use dot equals right we have already seen somewhere uh, i think registration confirmation page if you remember i'll just remind you that so validations are important and here we have we were validating the dear so and so username so and so right so dear first name last name so my expected value is the requirement says dear first name last name and the actual value is whatever is displayed dear selenium automation that is the actual value so you simply compare using dot equals okay dot equals ignore case actually ignores the case sensitivity like small or upper case or lower case but you need the exact d has to be capital so you just use equals and print the parser fail so similarly we have used the same but here numbers are compared with equal sign equal sign is in java is equals equal that is a logical equal so you have to use the same thing and if both are equal you say pass and you can print something here and fail you can print something here okay but every time you don't have to write if and else again you have to you can create a reusable function for it okay we will see that later okay since we are we're in the middle of something we will see that for that uh, instead of creating this reusable function for validation in uh, infrastructure because infrastructure is not appropriate place to put this function in so we will create a util because this is kind of util so you have to think like that so we will create reporting utils and put it so let's do it right away because we already uh, brought up the topic so let's create it immediately and we can further enhance it later. okay so since it's a util okay and it's for reporting because reporting i'm reporting something positive and i'll call it reporting util simple as util or utils because there will be multiple functions let's call it utils so everything is thought out logically and implemented logically so let's create a function inside it okay now tell me how do you want to create a function <clears throat> is it html report or now say that again it is in html reporting or uh... What kind of report you, you want to generate here? Reporting is the same thing. This this is called reporting. Validate you validate then report, right? Okay. So I forgot to tell you. So validation is done for the reporting purpose. So we validated. We compared the actual value with the expected value here or in the book of flight, right? And what we are doing here, this system out dot print and we are reporting. Reporting where to the console for the time being. We will we will have to report to the some file or email. Uh, that is later so at least we will create the four lines in a user function instead of creating these four lines in every time in the page flows we'll just call that function from youtube sounds good that is that will be easier right so we have already done this two times so and this is for the reporting the whole validation is done for the reporting purpose and that's why we are putting this function in the reporting okay now i want to i want this to be static because i don't want to create an instance every time right then obviously what should be the signature of my function public public static static 
and I know. I know. You don't have to be final. You don't final for the function means you should not. It will make it not uh, like uh, you cannot uh, overload it. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So not make this the public is big wide. Wide, wide because return type. Everything mm -hmm. has uh, meaning here. Public because I want to uh, access this function outside the class somewhere here. Static yeah. because I want to use report utils dot whatever the function name is. Wide because it should not return anything. Okay, I don't have to return anything. So if you want to return, you can put wide. Okay, then you call the name. Uh, what what should be the name of this function? So I want to call this report result. I am reporting a result, right? Pass or fail. That's simple as it. Okay. Now you have to pass some arguments. What are those arguments? One is, is expected value. Correct. Expected value. You have to pass it. Expected value. And one is actual value. These values I am, I'll be passing from here. So I don't know these values right now. So I'll make it as an argument. That's simple as it. Okay. Then you, like I said, minimum two values, but maximum you can put one more. So let's put uh, in the beginning, okay, uh, a comment, report comment, like whatever you want to report, like pass uh, so and so total price, total price equals so and so. All these things can be put in the reporting comment. So three values, three arguments, and done. Now let's open the bracket so that we can define. Okay, so definition wise, how do you want to define? Simply if, tell me, if, yes, how do you want to compare two values? If expected, same thing, whatever. Expected equal to. Expected result? Yeah, I mean, come. Yeah, it it is taking time. Wait, first time I press this. Yeah, okay. Expected value dot, dot equal. equals because it's a yeah. string. Dot equals actual value. Okay. Now, what do you want to print if expected value dot equals actual value? Then I want to sys out for the time being. Okay. Yes. You can write yeah. and. Yes, we will say pass first. And then what is pass? I will take it from report comment. I will be passing like uh, the total price or dear, uh, first name, last name, whatever that comes from there. So let's put concatenation operator plus whatever the report comment is. We will pass it here. Okay. So if you want to add more, we can add more. So let's say we can add more plus again. And I want to also mention expected result and actual result, whatever it is, are both of same. So let's mention those things so that it will look nice. So expected is equal to expected, right? Now plus one more actual. And actual equals plus actual because for the past case both are equal. So I want to oh, see exactly what are the ex expected value and actual value so that I will be clear from the console point of view at least. Now, if condition is over, let's put a else condition. Same thing, whatever we have done, we are generalizing it. That's all so that we can use it. Okay, now I want to just copy the sys out and just make some modifications and I'll be done. So instead of pass, it should be considered as fail and report comment, what is fail. So here expected is expected and we can see exact difference. Expected is something and actually something else. So here I'll put not same as Why fail? Why fail? We can easily figure out and debug it further and see. If it is really fail, we'll we'll raise a defect and talk to developer. If it is fail because something we did uh, in the coding as a mistake, then we will correct it. So that's the easiest process. Okay. Now here, like 
the first example first evaluation it will be okay because those are strings now in the second example for book like total price that is actually integer so here it's not a string so in this case how do we use it uh, there are two options here one is you overload this function and pass the integer value right that is one thing and instead of that you could have convert these convert these values you know the integer values back to strings okay so string dot two value will give that so that way you can use single function so it's up to you so let's do one thing instead of this mess again converting back converting it doesn't look good so let's create two functions here same functions but overloaded functions you know overloading means right overloading means what is the overloading i am overloading the function watch overloading means keep the same name okay but change the signature return type or argument so what i'm doing is instead of string i will be passing integer simple as that so that is overloading oh sorry the first one is a string right let me expand this yeah this still remains the string because report comment is not an integer irrespective of integer or what it is still string now expected value will be string now you can ask what about the double okay so don't stress about double so we will see that about uh, that later we can put one more or just convert it to string i'll show you both ways later okay so we already know when these two are integers the comparison operator should be little different and what is that how do we compare two values which are integers equals equals right same thing with double same thing so at that if we encounter double or long we, we, we can immediately create one more overloaded function and use it so we will see whenever that's why i said on the need to need basis we will create this function okay so now we will come back we will use this function immediately okay for the first function i will leave it leave it be so i will just use it okay now tell me instead of all this four lines how we can use i want to use the function what is that it's a static function so you don't have to remember anything just call the class uh, and class name should be something like reporting util so just type report and there you go that is the beauty of it you don't have to remember anything just intuit intuitively you can call and because the intuitively I named it if you name it something else it will be very difficult that's why naming is very important now dot report result there are two now which one you want to use the one which takes integer not string so it will be easy okay report comment uh, i want to say this report comment is for total price correct total light price okay so then expected value is this guy whatever is the expected value and actual value is this guy okay so now there is no need for these four lines isn't it the one line will do everything so i'll delete it do you want me to delete it or just comment it for the later reference comment it please yes, comment it, yeah so when i comment it right below you just refer it as be these two these two things are same and this is the easiest way easiest way means using the framework this is the easiest way too because it's a primitive way i would say i mean this is the automation framework way because we developing we are developing the framework we are using it okay now that is done and uh, we will see run it and see and where we land up and i gave you homework i will let's see what happened with that So now I have one more question in here. Um, the reporting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you you create two class in uh, in reporting utils. One is a string and one is integer. So when we are uh, going to verify the title, so we have to use the string one, right? 
Yes. Okay. Okay, so this looks like it's taking time, but okay, because we put implicit weight, we are good. So if we did not put implicit weight, it could have failed because it takes long time and it just immediately automation will fail, and even the application will run automation. Okay, so this is where we stopped and we validated this portion. Now I asked you to do this stuff, like create exports and uh, page flows and uh, update the data pool did uh, anyone do this yeah i, I did but uh, uh, my excel uh, excel program is not working something error coming but i did what, like what error you are facing uh, my error shows um, like remove arguments from accessible workbook or like you use Workbook, workbook dot close is not is coming error there. Okay, so did you upload all those jar files that uh, are supposed to be? These are the jar files I'll show you. Yes, I downloaded from online and reference library. See where the these POI, POI one, POI two, three, four, five, six files must be uploaded to your Java build for. okay so i guess those are missing otherwise you 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 said you are getting the workbook dot close error right that's where you're yeah, getting. yeah yeah so that looks like that can you check and let me know whether you have you see all these six files in your reference library right within the eclipse you can see this if you don't then you have to right click and go to properties or not this property sorry build path build path configure build path and it will take you there then you can add add external jars okay so you can add you can put the after unzipping you can put these files in c driver slips folder and then you can add them open them so that it will add it here yeah i add all the maybe yeah maybe I okay, so may, <clears throat> what is the exact error uh, uh ping me or text me uh, okay, okay, i mean chart chart window you can type it. but uh is everybody oh, I'll, I'll see it when i go there i'll show you oh okay that will be easier because it takes long time to share yeah, yeah. okay so anybody else getting the same issue or everybody else is okay uh, some can you tell me the how you did the, that resource file? So I was in confusion on that. Uh, the, you mean the data pool file? Data pool file resides in here, right here, resource folder. Yes. Okay, so when I opened it, I double clicked opened it, it opened here. So whatever updates I want to do, I want to do here. Okay, let me show you instead of just talking. So first name, last name is already there, uh, right? So first name, last name and i have to add the companions first name last name too so let's add it here instead of there so let me create two more so these will be first name two because that's a companion who is traveling and this is a last name two okay so let's call first name two as that should be the first name one and last name one and the first name zero. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea too. Yeah, we can rename, but we have to rename in the code also. Just remember that if you forget, it will throw error. It couldn't find this first name, so it has to be exact. That, okay, so that's a good idea. But if we, in case the three people are traveling, number of passengers is equal to three. Let's say we have to add more. So you can also, depending upon, you can create more test cases for that. I'll show you because right now this is the only test case if you want to create one more test case with three members and their only flight are uh, traveling one way let's say then the scenario will be different so let's try that one because in real time we'll have more scenarios more test cases right okay so let's expand this 
so the technique is just select all and expand the first one it will expand all you can see the whole text there okay so this is xls not xlsx so every time it's showing the error to me i don't know okay so uh, last name first name two let's put uh, um, what do you want call let's put ramesh okay and phone number and everything this is a family phone number right everything remains the same it's not asking two times let's see what are the other data points okay then credit card type okay so let's put credit card type as new column credit card type will be whatever we want to select we can put it there yes. i mean that's my test case I want to use visa, so let's use visa. Exactly, you have to put the same word in, otherwise it will fail. And then credit card number, that is another one. So okay so this has to be 16 digits number one two three four five six seven eight nine nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen okay. okay so just okay this is one problem with the excel every time you enter this bigger number it adds e plus 51 that is into 10 to the power of 15 1.26457 into 10 to the power of 15 that's what it says right and uh, the apache py doesn't know whatever is there in here it will copy right so in order to avoid this situation you just append this uh, as a prefix with the hyphen uh, quote a single quote okay so that means that i am telling excel that treat this as a string literal exactly so now it won't do anything so that's a technique so when it does it adds this green color top green color uh, triangle thing so that you can immediately figure out that this is a string literal okay so technique one more so any number you want to treat it as a string literal i mean this is a string so just append this in the beginning single quote that's it it won't if it won't uh, copy this okay it will not copy the uh, whatever symbol you entered but just a number so all i'm saying is just treat this as a number these are all strings that are okay but if you enter number this is also string because i put hyphens right now if you don't put hyphens let's say some people do not put hyphens in the phone number now excel messes it up okay sometimes if it is a bigger number it messes it up right now it's just 10 digits it's okay but if i add more numbers it puts like this e to the power of e plus 15 right that's not good so if you want to treat this as string literal you just put symbol okay so even if i don't have i can put it just in case okay okay so now we are in adding the credit card number and then meal preference we can add or no preference is okay so let's add vegetarian oh meal preference is uh, before the credit card right so let's add this here meal okay credit card number is done and first name middle name last name i can take it from first name one and middle name can be left empty and last name one i can take so i don't have to create again ticket let's travel is for the uh, the mobile ticketing i think you don't have to get a printout copy so since we are in encountering this for the first time checkbox we will take it ticket let's travel and we'll just select it like this that means you can travel without ticket uh, just by showing the passport uh, and um, mobile digital uh this thing digital uh confirmation number okay so ticket list travel yes this is little tricky 
why because there is no input okay so here we will see something so if ticket list travel <coughs> is, is yes you can put y also then we will select it if the data pool says no we will unselect it i mean it's not all it's already unselected if it is yes selected if it is no just don't select it just don't click on it so that's it. so uh, i am putting this because there is uh, we haven't encountered the checkbox so far so let's do it and billing address everything is taken dynamically so it's random it's dummy address so don't worry about it and we'll simply click secure purchase all right oh so we forgot something uh, can anybody point out that we forgot something credit card type credit card number expiration date not enter see so so i am adding this in the same order so that even if you want to read it it will be easier expiration date is having two things month and year so let's bifurcate okay so what i'll show you is expiration i'll add it here in single uh, line single cell but we will uh, split it okay so that we will see more java things so let's say this is 12 and unfortunately there is no year beyond 2010 because they stopped developing maintaining after 2010 so we will take 2010 expiration it doesn't matter there is no validation it's just dummy site so we will take 12 2010 okay as a single expiration so this is a credit card expiry okay we can call it whatever you want 12 2010 okay okay so now you can ask me i am not splitting uh, i could have created two credit card expiry month credit card expiry year separately but the thing is i don't want to create extra so i just put year and month in the same column now we will see how to split it okay that we can use some java string functions so i wanted to show you more so whenever we get chance that's it i guess now we will just simply secure purchase is a button you don't have to enter anything right we just need the x path so all we need is entered in here now let's go back and get the x paths quickly uh most of you people must have gotten x paths i believe okay otherwise you do it in the after this class but i am doing it anyway right now because without which i cannot proceed okay so quickly tell me what are the x paths we will go fast double slash okay so name is pass first zero so we have that so i'll use contains at the rate name pass first zero zero means zeroth member okay so we got a single match good i uh, will go back and we already created book a flight page object right object book a flight page object we'll go there and just add it there okay so i can also segregate this passenger section separately because this is summary related so just put some comment <coughs> and here <coughs> this public static final string okay so now what kind of object it is it is a text box so we we'll put a text box and that is a first name let's call it first name one because there are more first names first name two so we'll add this now uh, say that again first name one or j it doesn't it matter be. our name right so if i put zero we may get confusion so let's treat it as first name one and first name two even though x path says first name zero that's okay we don't care about the x, x path we'll take it but this is a user level right so first name one we'll know okay we can say zero also but that will be too confusing because we call this this is our uh, our choice 
this is not our choice whatever developer says you have to go with it but this is our choice so let's choose it wisely so one is better way zero means i don't understand after uh, 30 days if you ask me i i'll just still say this is a first name one first name two right so surface level it has to first name one. okay now let's say the number of passengers are three right but what about the other so the application will automatically populate that when you uh, select the passengers number three in the previous pages it will add one more row with first name last name and again so we will treat that as first name three last name three right so automatically that development uh, uh, developer has already put that functionality in place depending upon the number of passengers he will keep on adding these objects okay so we got that add it here okay so i need couple more one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i'll just uh, copy this and so that we don't have to type these public static final strings so you'll we'll just modify that it will be easier for for you also you can do the same thing mm, okay so the second is last name zero so all i need to do is okay so first take this guy first name zero right first name one with yes so let's take this guy and let's treat this as first name two and you just change this to one done okay so then first zero then i want a last name right so this comes by practice you already know the things intuitively you don't have to work on it from the scratch so just over over it and you got it so i'll take this and this guy should be last name last name one then last name two will be here last name one okay so i'll just copy this guy and call it last name two and all i need to change is the number here last name one. i did everyone do like this or in a different way i don't know so just compare with your own code okay if you have done the homework and correct it accordingly i mean if you if you give this different names that's fine there is no right or wrong with that okay but uh, if syntactically or export is wrong this then you can compare yours with mine okay so then meal preference we have to create export right everything has to be identified by the export okay so this is a select because it's a drop down so we already know that's a select okay then name pass zero meal zero that's a name so we'll copy that and name is name so we'll paste it and we got the match okay we'll take this so meal preference for the first passenger so this has to be named appropriately so what do you want to call this drop down underscore meal one okay so that will be easy for me to identify okay so then the second should be drop down for the meal too so i am sure just by the changing change of number it will make the difference let's move it here so first test it uh, before so i am uh, just guessing it should be one so let's try it yes your guess is correct so just by changing this number to one it will okay so those are done then credit card let's come here okay select select name is credit card that's it okay so we got a single match good copy this 
okay so we have to change this name appropriately drop down underscore credit card type we know it's a credit card type so we have to be explicitly mentioning that okay so then credit card number which is this text box so let's try that so input this is and the credit number that's a name so i'll just copy it credit number so we got a single match so these things are easy sometimes you get you don't get easy that easy so yeah, if you're lucky then you'll get the xbox easy so this is credit card number yeah yeah tell me you're saying is a drop down or there is a sentence oh sorry yeah, yeah, yeah you're right good catch this is not a drop down this is the text box okay uh, i was uh, carried away <laughs> with this naming convention okay so, so suddenly you will get the text box here you get this okay good catch okay now again two more drop downs So select so whatever is there you just put it here so select name is cc expiration date month so okay whatever it is there actually it says date month it is month and year okay that's a developer mistake but we don't point that out because whatever is there we have to take it there is no other option <clears throat> okay so one of one match the expiration for the first one Oh, this is the date. Okay, so year is separate, right? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we'll take this guy and expiration date. Uh, I mean, date month comes here. Drop down. That is. We can just call it CC uh, instead of credit card every time, but I don't want to be. I mean, mentioning short forms. I will be mentioning full forms. Easier to do easier to figure it out later credit card uh, let's call it expiry month so that should be okay okay one more drop down so okay so let's not guess even i can't guess what this is so let's do it. okay year date oh i see expiry date month expiry date year okay the naming convention is fine okay so that is single match okay what i'm going to do is i'll just copy this and paste it here and credit card month becomes year okay so that is done and first name middle name last name again we have to even though the values are okay repeatedly we can use from data pool but xbox are different so we have to again pinpoint them because the position changes hierarchy changes every time everything changes so you have to re -evaluate, evaluate the text box so this is the input again and name is cc first name okay that's a first name uh, zero this is a credit card first name so both are different so otherwise we would have gotten more matches yeah so that's a perfect match okay text box first name but this first name is actually credit card first name okay so middle name we are not putting but if you put we can put we have to add it here also first name one middle name one last name one so we are not using middle names you can leave it empty which is acceptable if persons don't have middle name you can leave it as okay so my guess for the last name is just change the frst to less i don't know they put short forms lst no 
display STS. So I can copy this change yes, here first becomes last. And FRST, all we did change is LAST. Okay, so two more to go. One is checkbox. Okay, let's see what this checkbox should be. I think input, yes, because it's a type of input only. And the name is ticketless. Okay, so we got two matches. We have to work on it. Uh, what is the first match? Is this? Let's see what is the second match. Ah, uh, because this is also drop down uh, checkbox. So the name is matching. Unfortunately, they put the same name ticket list. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it is same as billing order, but that's okay. So value is checkbox, and that value is checkbox too. So we have to little bit work on it. Okay, so we cannot take at the rate name uh, ticket list and uh, contains at the rate value checkbox because that is going to give me two matches again because this guy also has the same thing. So the best way is to put some parents, right? We cannot put and, but we can put parents. That will make the difference. So if you see, this is a TD. So I told you, right? It is a part of the table. This everything is a table in here, which is hidden. All right. So whenever you encounter tdtr okay the best way is either you copy or let's see manually if you can figure out what's the table this is in td so if you look at td td align right i cannot take it right away okay because it's too difficult let's try it if you want to take it you know td is the parent okay still one two matches because that this also has a td okay and align is right but this is also align right so my guess will be it will also not help so and you can take more tr bg color cc that's not gonna help okay background color cc is it's in uh, hexagonal so it's a background color is gray gray means something it's in you can mention the colors in rgb format red blue green numbers everything red blue green is ranging from 0 to 26 if you don't know so you can vary the colors with the combination of rgb you can get any color so that is one way or you can mention the hexagonal number like this hashtag okay so i told you so the best way to deal with any elements that are in the table is copy x path all right paste store here okay now input is input okay we will cover this later and if you see come from the right and stop at the first table and remove everything else because that is absolute export now just put a double slash so this says there is a table which has a table body and whose row is ninth row and second column cell that has an input okay we got a match okay now you can mention inputs values okay now this is what i said right contains at the rate name comma and ticketless if you want to be specific so this is not mandatory optional but we will do it anyway okay so single match now initially what we did we only put it till here and this was fetching us two matches remember because it was matching with this guy there are two check boxes unfortunately developer has put same names that is their mistake but we can cannot ask them to change it that's their choice now what how what we can do is by mentioning its parent unique path we can get the single match uniquely so i am saying this input is in a table data second data and table row nine that's exactly the hierarchy is here we can't you can't uh, it won't show you the 9 and 10 you have to count it td1 td2 like this it's very difficult so that's the way uh, that's why i chose the shortcut copy copy export and delete and put double slash here that's it you must get single match you will get it 
99.99% it will become single match if there is 1.0.001% you don't get it you keep on adding more tables that's the only option you still add one more table on the left then at some point of time it will give you single match that's for sure okay so now what is this guy this was a ticketless travel so let's create one variable for this final string and what kind of object this is what we are to name this variable as checkbox huh? checkbox yes yeah the reason i'm asking is we are encountering this for the first time in our session right now okay so that is for ticket less travel we will name it appropriately and i got this in the key uh, clipboard so i'll paste it here okay so this was a little difficult but we got it okay so finally we click this button or link or input whatever it is yes that's the input and the image type image yes name is by flight source is so and so height so the best way to take is either name or id or uh, whatever is whatever is uh, i mean sounds uh, good for you just take it i mean it's, there is no hard and fast rule here so just take it whatever you want contains we will use contains every time because it's the easiest uh, and most effective way of dealing with spots name and by flights okay good single match again and this is a we are treating this as a button because it looks like a button so we'll call it and what is this secure purchase okay so we are done with exports finally i am sure you at least you have done some of this not all of this okay so now we'll go back and see okay before this we encountered a new object called checkbox so we will create the infrastructure operation immediately because we have to operate upon it right so far we are so let's create it here after the radio button checkbox that will be here. so this is to check the checkbox okay now how do you create a reuse function you already know so you must have practiced it so tell me public void what do you want to do do with this checkbox click yes. checkbox and you want to pass web driver driver and what else you want to pass for this checkbox xpath expression string xpath expression let's call it okay now you define it so you already know how to define using the driver driver dot find element by dot we are going for x path this guy we'll choose this and pass x path expression exactly this one so we'll match this okay so what is the operation same thing dot click only for link radio button checkbox button everything we are clicking exactly so is just this is like clicking only even though it's selecting but that's the way the web driver has named it so we are doing. okay then also we are adding some sysout remember that's uh, for logging purposes so sysout and check say click checkbox and using which checkspot expression we'll say so this will clearly say what is uh, we are doing and what is that we are doing on what okay so now we have done the export for the i mean reusable function for that and go to book a flight and so far we have created a function called summary okay 
so because we have dealt with summary part here now we are dealing with passengers and credit card section okay we'll create two functions it doesn't matter passengers and credit card and submit okay right here this is the end of the previous function i'll just expand it okay public void and this is the passengers within the flight uh, book a flight page so that will make the difference and this also takes a driver because the driver is passed from first case okay now tell me uh, first thing what do you want to do first name you have to type something so what is the function op dot yes send case set text i mean send case is okay send case is in internal you're right uh driver dot find element by x path send keys yes but we have created a function for it so we'll use that set text box in the interview you have to say send keys only not set text so you are right okay so where we are so in order to go there just to use this back button this excel browser's back button it will take us to where we lost edited okay so xpath expression we already know it's class name book a flight object dot okay now that's a text box so which one is the one you want to say you want to take this name guy, right? first name one not the credit card section the first name one okay now input value we have to take it from where data pool data pool correct the first name one oh we forgot to change this first name once right so we will go there and immediately change otherwise it will error out so where did we put the register page yes let me just expand it again okay so here the the way we have read the xpath the x uh, data pool is using the hash map so we have created the excel utils and uh, there is a function get test data xls called it and pass the parameter data pool path demo eat which is this sheet name and then header number zero and then test case number one okay so this is one if test case is two we have to add here and pass two here so this is the first test case we are putting it here so i'll show you different way in a moment but don't worry this is okay okay so here we change the naming convention from first name to first name one and last name to last name one so we changed it and anywhere else no i think that's it yep that's it okay so now we have to read the data again in book of flight from the data pool right so where do we read the data we read the data somewhere here okay that's what we have done like how do we read the data from excel utils so excel just type excel utils and dot Oh, so we have to read it in within a function because yeah, so this function we have to read Excel utils dot now which is a function get test data XLS okay we are not dealing with XLSX for the time being okay for timing we are only using XLS so we'll call it and it is asking in the file path file path is in the constants remember constants dot which one is it data pool path we'll pass it and sheet name is demo eight we can also store it somewhere but i that will be too messy demo aut and header number is the third one header number header row number is zero we know that it starts from zero so that's a header number zero and test case row number is one only here if we are dealing with if we create one more test case we have to add we have to pass two so for now it is one okay now the whole thing is returning hash map hover over it it is returning hash map of string string type right so you know why hash map because you want to store key and value first name one sangam 
for last name one y address one one two three so every time pair pair of values okay so we have to store this in a hash map of string string just like it's an integer but instead of integer it's a hash map so it's a data type string string and we'll call it this as a tc data correct okay so hash map you have to again import from java utils and this one input value comes from tc data dot get okay and get what i want to get the first name one okay okay so now it might throw exception so just add throws declaration or surround with try catch that's it so every time you do the same thing okay now uh, if this works for the first test case what if there is a second test case let's say right there are you cannot change this is we are dealing with in page flows right and page flows must be generic and it has to work for first test case second test case 100 test case 200 test case whatever so if you pass one always it will fetch the data from here correct and even if even though we have data for all those test cases so that's not good so we have to change this mechanism a little bit so i'll show you we have to call this hash map in a static way so the best way to do is from data i will create a test data pool class and create a constructor and create this variable in a static way and we'll call it so that it will maintain the value the static variable will maintain the value okay the copies will not so let's create a class so we are just deviating from the test case but this is important because we want to do this for all the test cases so let's create test data pool okay so that the main purpose of this test data pool is to read the data from this test data pool for all the test cases if you have test case one test case two all right test case three it has to take all the data irrespective of the test case number and deal with that okay so this is going to be very generic okay so in this case i will just create a hash map value i mean hash map of string comma string So let's call this tc data because that pertains to test case data okay so i'll just import this hash map again equals i'll just instantiate this so you know how to instantiate using new keyword and this is just like assigning a initial value i mean initializing hash map and i will call the constructor so you know how to call a constructor like this using bracket okay so now i will create a constructor so like i told you in java class the main purpose of constructor is to load automatically as and when this class is instantiated from test case or wherever so we will create a constructor and the constructor name must match with the class name so test and i will make it public test data pool okay so the default constructor will not have any argument remember okay so this tc data is empty right now because i did not assign any value so what i will do is i will assign the tc data the whole row data from the data pool so the same way we have done from the flows but we will do it from uh, here test data pool only once we don't have to do it in here that is the main agenda so tc data is empty now i'm going to populate this with excel utils dot get test data xls 
right? This is the one we are using. Let me expand. And the file path is coming from the same constant, so I'll pass from the file path does not change and it should not. Constant start data pool path, right? And the sheet name is same demo ET. You can call it automation also, doesn't matter. Okay, so if you want to call, uh, let's say automation respect to the value it should work so let's pass automation since we are changing this we'll change automation here and header row number does not change okay every time it's the first row that is zero row. so we'll pass it here okay and t0 number should change because that is and uh, that is uh, for the first test case it has to pass test case row number one and two three four like that right now the problem here is i cannot pass the value as an argument in here because this is supposed to be a default constructor default constructors will not have any arguments okay so for the timing i'll add one so that will only deal with first test case but this is not good okay why because okay it's gonna throw error let's throw add surround with try catch okay let's say this okay so now this will work for the first test case only because i passed i hard coded number one here okay now we want to generalize this for all test cases that is the main agenda correct so for this what i'll do is i'll create a parameterized constructor what is a parameterized constructor the constructor which takes arguments okay so let's take this guy simply use the same name but i'll pass parameter what is a parameter my parameter will be the test case row number if i am running the second test case i'll pass 2 99 test case i'll pass 99 so simple as that it will work always so i'll call this tc row number okay now instead of passing 1 here i'll change this to tc row number that's it okay so whatever the test case number is it will take that and only read that data for example if i am running this test case i'll pass three and it will read this data only the selected data okay it works for 100 test cases very generic way okay so now we have to call this okay i'll show you how to call this don't worry so this class is created just now and in the class i created parameterized constructor this is going to be useful not this one so i just created this for the uh, understanding purpose initially so this is parameterized constructor to read any test case data okay depending upon the to uh, test case row number you pass it will read okay so now we'll come back here i'll just make some modifications so that you understand. okay so what did we do here we read the data from the first test case right and using that instance tc data i get first name last name and everything okay so here i don't want to do this because it might be for the second test case or third test case i don't know so i cannot pass this one which will be called as what what it will be called as it is hard coding right so now i'll comment this all right now okay just watch carefully this is very important now tc data is not there but if i go to test data pool i already got the whole tc data okay what is the tc data the tc data which was empty is populated with test data details okay the data pool details for the particular test case whatever it is so now i'll come back to the register page and i can call it call the tc data from test data pool how can i call it now tell me how can i call it this tc data i can call this yes So you call the class right tc data yes. pool so let's make it a static public 
static so now i can call this using the class name directly okay because this is a static it belongs to the class all the static variables belong to the class okay now i created tc data and right now it is empty and i populated this tc data with all the row data whatever the row number is the test case number is now we'll come back to the register page simply i will use test data pool dot okay so now there is a tc data okay i'll simply call this okay now the whole tc data whatever is there i i can get whatever i want to now here i'm getting first name one so similar fashion we will directly get it from T test data pool without having to instantiate in the page flows which is ridiculous but the initial understanding purpose i created but this is the best way okay so now i'm going to put everywhere test data pool dot okay everybody understand this this is very very important okay so now i am directly calling from test data pool in a static way so this will work for any test case i when i show you the second test case you will see okay this data dot data pool and one more last okay so everything looks okay and it will run too so when we run you will see no errors now we will go back to our second bouquet flight that's where we are trying to do this thing right or not this one the page okay now we don't need to do this anymore right we don't need to call excel utils again every time every single page we don't have to call this that is the reason we, why we have created that now we want to deal with that okay let's pretend this is not there okay now we have to pass something here okay well, what are we trying to do here we want to pass something here all right where we want to pass it from we want to pass it from data pool this guy okay set text pass the driver pass the x path now you pass the value okay now tell me how do you pass the value from here test data pool class so data hash map dot get and pass whatever is a column name you got this right now every time it's the same thing no difference okay now this is very very effective you don't have to call the x uh, hash map here directly you call the hash map from the test data pool in a static way tc data test case data is gotten and you just take whatever you want from the data pool first name last name data birth gender whatever it is okay so now we got it there is more to it okay so but before that we will fill these blanks okay then last name so then i'll do it one more time uh, from the sketch so that you will understand op dot set text correct driver is passed xpath expression is coming from book of flight object dot text box text box underscore last name one then value where is the value coming from test data pool just from here on you just get used to this okay this is the easiest way test data pool and tc data tc data is the hash map and from tc data i'll get and what i want to get the last name okay so just copy this instead of typing it will be prone to errors again okay so this is a string you pass it okay so you see the get function takes the object get function takes the object now object is very uh i mean very generic uh object everything is an object in java so instead of object i can pass whatever i want i can pass string also now it takes that and returns me a string the string will be what is the string it returns exact value whatever is the value is okay it will take this as input and gives me this output everybody is with me okay so now we'll 
do other operations okay now tell me how do you fill all those details copy the same line just change the text box dash underscore word. right yeah So the third one is op dot. Okay, so this is little different. How do you deal with this meal? Select right. Yes. No, no. What is the function? That is correct. Mm. Drop down. Click link. I do. Hello. I cannot hear anything. Uh -huh. It's been two minutes. Yeah, it's actually I think Sangam's uh, laptop is uh, there is no charge, no battery. I think it's 
stopped, I think. Okay, it's good to hear that nobody is hearing. Something, everybody is something.
Guys, are you hearing anything? No. Can, can can anyone contact with Sangam? Because I don't have his number. Uh, I think I have Asadul Haq's number. Maybe let's try. OK. If you find them, please let us know. Yeah, of course. Hey, I have a question I missed last class. Can anyone hear me? Yes, 